Hello, this is Anya Devine here. If you want to know more about my work, have a look at the links below. I'm going to do a little bit more to my painting of Louise here, and I thought you might like to see how I tackle an eye in watercolour working from photos. It's fairly different from when I work from life. Uh, so let's see how it goes. All right. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry about that. The camera almost fell there. Right, so let's go. <clears throat> Right, I'm using the quarter inch brush. I don't like to go too much smaller than that because it keeps me doing the important stuff when I've got a bigger tool than the area I'm making. Okay, so looking at uh, Louise's left, the eye on the left there, what I'm wanting to do is to first make a color that will represent the shadow. So I'm using the Viridian Green mixed with some of the cadmium red there, I think, because I want to find a shadow color that'll work in here and uh, be subdued. I think maybe a touch more of the red. <clears throat> so red and green mixed together make a good kind of a grayscale color that I think works as something for a shadow for the eye area. So this is really the shadow that's cast by the eyelid onto the white of the eye. And uh, it kind of helps to show the curve of the eye when you find the um, when you find the shadow that's cast by the eyelid. And I see the same colour is appearing here on the underside of the lid. There's a kind of a horizontal line, which I think I'll just print with the brush like that. <clears throat> and uh, I don't want the dark to accumulate there, so I'm just going to lift that little bubble of dark paint off with a dry brush. And I'm going back now to pick up some more of the wet paint, the Viridian Green again, with some more of the Cadmium Red. And I want it to be a little bit darker this time, so I'm going to put a touch of the ultramarine blue in as well. Um, there we are. Okay, so what I'm going to find now, I'm looking really closely at the photograph, to see that there's a kind of a parallel line of eyelashes. It's parallel to the line of the shadow here. And it extends up and over, kind of connecting to the shadow and uh, creating the dark line where the eyelashes stop and the light on the eyelid starts. And there's a few little eyelash hairs that come over here, which I think I might as well explain to. <clears throat> and when I'm doing that, I look up here, like as soon as you do something kind of intricate and detailed, you want to, do, you want to find where else it is in a more general way. And so I'm going to use that same darkish colour that I used on the lashes up here on the eyebrow so that it feels like it's integrated into the eye area and not just these shades in isolation down here. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit more of the cadmium red into that colour there just so that it'll warm up a little bit for the inner corner of the eye. Now it's already drawn out so I don't have to make those decisions but <coughs> I do still need to be sure that I'm locating the the right tone for the area that I'm looking at. Let's see. And it is all generally darker underneath the lid. The lid is probably lighter than the white of the eye even. Of course, there's the catch light in the eye that's really bright. But aside from that, everything else around it is more in shadow than, say, the um, white of the eye. Uh, then these are the eyelid and the white of the eye is also light enough. Okay, so I put in a bit of sap green now into the um, mix that I had in there. So the mix I had in there was the cadmium red, ultramarine blue and viridian green. The sap green is a lighter kind of mossy, grassy green. And I think it'll represent Hazel's be or <laughs> Louise's beautiful hazel eyes a little bit better than the viridian, which is cooler. And really, I'm still just finding the general areas of dark and light. <clears throat> okay, and standing back allows me to see the two eyes together and know whether they're working or not. Uh, and standing back also made me want to just establish generally where the darks are, knowing that later I can go in and define them a little bit more. So I'm going to use some yellow ochre now to begin finding this the skin on the eyelid and the shadows that are out there. So a bit of yellow ochre 
and I think alizarin crimson. Let's see, more yellow ochre. I think that'll be okay. I'm just gonna put a touch more water in so it's not quite as dense a color. And you see that that color uh, appears elsewhere. I'm trying to find a bit of scrap paper to show you. I'll just use the paper towel. To see how that, that color reads as happening elsewhere in the on the face anyway, so it's always good to have something that's already lively around the skin to to paint in the eye area too. <coughs> okay, and I wanted to extend the shadow out here. Make it's darker beyond the eyelid. And I think I've kind of warmed up the colours a little bit in general in the face. You know, they're generally warmer than they are in the photograph. So I'm happy enough that although it doesn't read like the eye colour is actually here, the, you know, the skin around the eye is in the photo, then uh, I think it's close enough to the colours in the, the rest of the painting that it, that it fits. I'm not going to warm it up too much more than that though, because warm colours tend to come forward and I want this eye to recede around the face for us. And I'm going to continue now going back to kind of a darker colour, a bit of the blue into that. Uh, so that I can find the, I want to extend the eye across the way this shadow makes it read as though the eye is ending here and it's not. It's ending out here where the dark of the eyelashes are and where they meet the light uh, eyelid. So I'm putting some more little pointers out here to, to kind of pull our eye over. There we are. And I think I can use that same dark colour to begin to find the colour of the dark of the pupil that's in here. And it is almost as though there's a shadow cast by the eyelid onto even the iris there. So I'm pulling up the colour of the pupil to identify that shadow and to identify the darker outer rim of the iris where the coloured part stops and the white of the eye starts. <clears throat> yeah, we're getting there. Okay. And now a little bit more of the shadow of the lower lashes this time. I'm standing back in between moves now so that I can see her looking at me and I can see if there are glaringly obvious things that need to be adjusted. So I'm putting a little bit more of the cadmium red in because what I want to do is to identify the little wrinkle that's here. It's like a step between the eye and this shadow that's here before the nose. And I think as I do that, I could bring some of that same warm color over here because I'm actually making this area warmer than this side. <coughs> And I want to kind of bring the two sides, the two sockets of the eyes together as I'm working. Now that I'm bringing this up into more detail, I think it's appropriate that this side comes up a little bit more in terms of tone as well. And you know, when you're working on something like this, you begin to notice, and I would recommend that you do keep a radar up for any sort of tension arising. So there was a tightness in my belly there and I just let it all hang out again. And sometimes my shoulder feels a little bit sore holding up my arm all the time. These things are like gifts to you because they let you know that your painting needs a bit of breathing space. So as soon as you feel that tension arising, draw back and consider doing something general somewhere else or simply having a look at what you're doing. That's what I'm going to do just now. <clears throat> Yeah, and when I stood back, I recognised that maybe there could be a bit more shadow up here behind the hairs of the eyebrow. And the shadow that could be there might might have more of the sap green than cadmium red in it. <coughs> so I think I've warmed this up enough. Just going to drop into the wet paper some of this greenish colour. And I also want to soften this shadow. So it's not all about the eye. It's about really fitting the eye into the landscape of the face. And this little socket is the first field within which the eye is going to sit. And so that needs to connect with the rest of the face 
in a convincing way. Uh, making a little bit more of the warm colour, but uh, not as warm as I originally had. So it's got more green than red in it still. And I want to use it when I half close my eyes behind the eyelashes there is darker than the white of the eye above it. There's also a little flash of some warm skin colour, I think, between the shadow and the eyelashes over there. And those eyelashes, when I stand back, let me just check it out. I think those eyelashes are going to extend a little bit. It's kind of helpful for me if those, if that eyelash, the very one arched, arched this way eyelash. It's helpful for me if it reaches the end of the face because it kind of pulls the pulls the eye out as we're looking at it and it pulls the actual eye out that I'm painting. I think it's there. Let me see. Yeah. It's still quite a concentrated exercise in seeing as well and seeing the relationship between parts. And now that that's deeper in tone, I'm going to deepen the tone of the pupil again and just see when I stand back how that reads. And the turn in the eyebrow is also quite dark up there. Yeah, we're getting there. And now to me, when I stood back, I needed to put some more colour in relation to the other eye. There's more uh, a kind of a warm greeny brown colour in the iris. So I'm going to bring some more colour into this one and I can darken it later again then. But first I think it needs to have, it needs to be more colourful. I've actually sent Louise a message this morning because I want to check. Oftentimes you can't really tell the colour of the eyes from photographs. So I wanted to double check that she does have hazel green eyes because that's how I read them here. But they could be brown, they could even have a blue hint to them, you'd never know, it depends on the colour of the printout and things. Okay, so I'm just darkening it, kind of wanting it to read as similar to this side. Knowing that the darks, the very deep dark tones that I'm going to put in similar to these over here, will resolve it anyway. So I'm not concerning myself too much about working over the, the wet iris just now. I'll wait till it dries and then I can put some of the darker tones in there again. So in the meantime, I'll further establish the shadow colours that I see around the eye. There's a little smiling wrinkle here. And looking across at the colours of the shadows underneath the other eye, causes me to put some more viridian green into the into the mix. And also to keep it fluid. I don't want there to be sharp outlines over here when there are none over on this side, because more than the side that's closer to us, this needs to soften and recede really. Um, but of course, there's always the possibility of softening and receding after the event. So after I found where after I've found where things are, I can then allow, <clears throat> I can then uh, just inject some water to soften some of the edges again. If the reading is too contrasting, too dark to light. Now it seems to me that it's a good idea to put some kind of a tone into the white of the eye so that it sits back a little bit more. And um, what am I going to do there now? I think maybe the cerulean blue with some of the lemon yellow will give me a colour that will work. I'm not sure, but let's just see what it looks like. Yeah, I think that's okay. I'll lift it off a little bit because it's a bit colourful. I just wanted something that red is not being the same colour as the skin around it and not the white of the paper either. I know I think it'd be quite good to have something warm in that eyelid in contrast to the colour in the white of the eye. This is a very warm orange, it's Windsor orange, so I'm putting some lemon yellow, cadmium lemon yellow into it so that it reads more as an elastoplast colour and not quite that bright. But I want it to be bright enough at the same time so that it looks like the light is falling on this warm eyelid. That's 
my daughter singing upstairs. I don't know if you can hear. She's off school with a sore head, funnily enough. Okay, so um, there we are. Something a bit warmer there. I mean, at this point now, it's probably a good idea for me to, to go to other parts of the face and bring those up into a bit more detail without uh, getting too drawn in to working only in the area of the eye. I would recommend that that's the case for you whenever you're working, that you, that you don't allow yourself to get completely absorbed in one part to the detriment of seeing the whole thing. It's a bit like any problem in life, isn't it? It's important to step back and see the big picture occasionally. So with that in mind, I'm going to stop the video now and, uh, and do a bit of stepping back. And uh, hopefully you can see me here. Uh, thanks very much for watching. And as I say, have a look at the links below if you want to know more about what I'm doing. And I'll show the finished picture uh, at some point as well on my website or on Facebook or both. Okay, take care. Happy painting. Bye.